on BBC Sussex and BBC Surrey. 21 minutes to 11 and we're having a conversation about cannabis today and whether it should be legalised for medical use. What about its recreational use? Do you have a view on that? Get in touch, 81333, start your message with the word radio. Carly, hello. Hello, how are you doing, Johnny? I'm well, thanks. Thanks for chatting to us about your condition and, and what is used to control your pain. Tell me about it. Absolutely. Um, well, I have a chronic pain condition called fibromyalgia um, that I sort of that happened following a stroke in 2011. Um, and I was put on very, very heavy opiates in sort of increasing amounts. So first, tremadol, trocodamol, then it progressed to um, morphine, and then it progressed even further to fentanyl, which is actually um, 50 times stronger than heroin. It's essentially clean heroin that they um, that is delivered through a transdermal patch, which is attached to your skin. So that's constantly being pumped into your system. Um, did, did it work for you? It, to be honest, not not you know not as much as cannabis has. Um, I was on I was on that for six years, almost six years. Um, and I was zombied out. I, you know, it, it totally ruined my quality of life, and um, you know, it was a horrific experience. And it didn't particularly control my pain um, as much as it should have done. Yeah, the that those drugs are, you know, prescribed by doctors to t treat conditions. What about the kind of uh, cannabis-based drugs we've been talking about in the last few days? Are they? Um, they, you know, they're not available to chronic pain patients at the minute. Uh, GW, as you know, produce a, um, produce a, a tincture called Sativex. Now, that is licensed for use um, by MS patients for spasticity and by, for cancer patients for nausea. Um, but at the moment, that is very, very um, underfunded. And at the minute, the only patients that are accessing Sativex are those in Wales. So where do you get your MS. cannabis from then? I have to uh, go to the black market. I go to dark, dingy, horrible parks. I have done, you know, in you know, in a mobility scooter, have done on crutches, and put myself at risk. Um, but you know, I have to do that because cannabis controls my pain. It makes you know makes my life better. I think clearer. Um, I managed to withdraw from all of those horrible, horrible drugs um, with the use of cannabis. Um, well, that's quite startling to find out, Carly. Um, so, what you know, with the, these opioid-based drugs that you were talking about before, so much stronger. Yet they're licensed, but something that is, is comparatively weak, I guess, by comparison, uh, isn't. So why is that? Um, well, it's got a lot to do with, um, you know, the whole sort of reefer madness uh, situation that came about in the 70s. And it was sort of led by America at that time. Um, you know, and it, you know, it was a political decision and it wasn't based on fact. It wasn't based on evidence. Um, and as you know now, you know, the, their, their stance in America has completely turned around and I think it's 29 states that it's, um, that it's available uh, for medicinal use and, and now sort of starting to uh, bring up the recreational market. And, you know, I think we really need to look to them as a, um, you know, as, as an evidence base because, um, you know, the, the argument for things like mental health issues and psychosis is, is a valid one. I think cannabis is for everyone, but... Um, you know, in those states where they where they have legalised and recre uh, recreational and medicinal cannabis, the uh, the um, the number the cases for psychosis has not increased. It's not increased whatsoever. How, how um, do you feel about having to go to dingy, dark places to get this thing that can make you better? Well, it's horrible. It's really not a nice experience. I, you know, I'm not. Um, I don't feel like a criminal. I feel like a, you know, a, a responsible adult who's chosen to take responsibility for my own health. And I don't feel like I should be put in a position where, A, I'm putting myself at, at risk of physical harm or, you know, mugging or, you know, whatever, just, just in risky places. But also, I, you know, I don't feel like I should be looking over my shoulder when I need to, when I need to medicate with cannabis. Um, if I need to use my inhaler in public, I don't feel like I... I should have to be looking around to make sure, for example, that there's not police around or that I'm not going to offend or trouble anyone. You know. Do, do you worry about, does it concern you, any criminality that might go on behind the supplying uh, of the cannabis to you? Absolutely. You know, um, you know, I'm vegan. I'm an ethical person. I try, and, um, I try and make sure that my choices in life, in all aspects of my life, don't have um, a negative effect on the environment and on society. You know, I... 
you know, I think about those things and I don't don't feel like I really want to, to be supporting the black market. I don't feel like I want to be supporting any kind of violence or any kind of, um, you know, other criminal criminal activity that um, is potentially harmful for anyone. I don't I don't feel like I want to be contributing to that. Um, you know, I'd be much happier to go to a licensed outlet where I can go and um, collect the strains that I know work for my pain, and I, I, you know, know that that's a tested product, know that the THC levels are at a suitable amount for my condition personally. For What's my worrying me about you, Carly, is that your your wellness in terms of controlling your condition is at the hands of people who don't have your best interests at heart. So. The, the, the potential for you to get a bad batch or something that isn't what they're saying it is is pretty high, I'd imagine. Absolutely, and I, you know, I rely heavily on my on my knowledge and my research um, because you know there's hundreds and hundreds of different strains of cannabis, and particular strains for me uh, really, really manage my pain and really, really work. All the strains they're not for me. You no, know, it work as well. It's not great, and you know, whenever I do go to those parts and those, you know. Deep, what are essentially dealers, um, I have to trust them that they're giving me what, you know, a specific strain, I have to trust that what they're giving me is... Good luck to you on that one, Carly. Listen, a, a final point. Would it be possible, do you think, to legalise cannabis in, in the way that you use it and, and perhaps, you know, have it available over the counter or to be just prescribed by your doctor and not legalise the recreational use? Um, I think, you know, um, America did it initially in the form of um, medical cards. So you would have to go to a, you know, a registered clinician to be able to access that card. And that card then entitles you to be able to access those those things. You know, that is a possible way. But there's hundreds and hundreds of different ways that we can think about doing this. To keep everybody safe or to implement something that's structurally appropriate for these patients that really, really essentially just need some help.